joining us. On behalf of Sleeveless Bob and Lynn and myself, we're just grateful that you tune us in and that you watch us. And may God bless you and watch over you. There's a story that goes with our gospel today that I truly love. It's an old story, but uh, we can think of it. The gospel is about Jairus, whose daughter is dying, and it's also about the lady who touches Jesus' garment. And uh, the story goes something like this, and I think maybe it has a great deal of meaning because in the Midwest, we're certainly getting a lot of rain, a lot of flooding, and things like that. And there's a story of a lady who was in the rural area in the midst of rain and a flood that was coming on. And so pretty soon, the rain was up to her windows. And a boat came along as she was looking out the kitchen window. And the person in the boat said, come on, jump in the boat, I'll rescue you. And she said, no, she said. Uh, I don't need your boat because Jesus saves and I believe in him. He'll save me. Well, then the rains kept coming and pretty soon the flood was up to the second floor of that house. And she was looking out the second floor window. Another boat comes along you know, and the guy says, come on, get in the boat, I'll save you. She says, no, she says, I believe in Jesus. Jesus will save me. Well, in the next day, the rains are all the way up to the roof of the house, and she's sitting on the roof. And a helicopter pilot comes by, drops a rope ladder down, and says, Quick, you know, grab the, the rope ladder, and I'll save you. And she says, No, she says, I believe in Jesus. Jesus will save me. Well, as it turned out, the, she drowned, and as she's entering heaven, she says to St. Peter, you know, I've just got one complaint. She says, I believe in Jesus, and I told Jesus, people that Jesus would save me, and how come he didn't save me? And St. Peter looks at her and says, well, Jesus sent a boat once, Jesus sent a boat twice, and Jesus sent the helicopter and you just did not respond. But I think the lesson to be learned is that it's not enough for us just to say something, but Jesus expects us to cooperate with his saving message. In the gospel today, the person that Jairus has a daughter who is dying. She can't get up and go to Jesus, but Jairus goes to Jesus and says, will you come and be with my daughter? The woman with the hemorrhage didn't just sit and say, Jesus saves me. She got up and pushed her way through the crowd and touched Jesus' garment. And that was what saved her. There is the idea that you know, God works through natural means many times you know, in our lives and is there and we might not realize it. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth. For justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the evil envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, Lord for, for you have rescued me. me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me near, and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. Lord, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his good will. At nightfall weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will, I will praise, praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, and all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, they, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever has much, had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, 
And he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. And seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hand on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. And immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, Jesus, you see how many, how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. And while he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James. And when they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. And then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talatha Kom, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. And at that they were utterly astonished. He gave strict orders that no one should know of this, and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Do you think he can? The mother asked. Do you think that he cares about our family? Do you think that he will come to our house? The mother of that daughter that was dying wondered how Christ would react. Jairus, her husband, is standing at the doorway, and he looks at her and sees that she's frightened, you know, and that she's filled with dread at what she thinks might happen to her daughter. And then he looks across her shoulder to where the daughter is lying on a pallet. And he thinks to himself, this is my precious daughter. And then he says to his wife, I don't know how Jesus will react, but I do know that I have to go and ask him if he will come. I have to get up, and I have to go, and I have to ask. We'll see whether or not he can do anything whether or not he cares, and whether or not you know, he will come to our house. Because certainly our daughter can't go to him. When he gets to where Christ is, he immediately falls on his knees. And he says, my daughter, my precious daughter, 
is dying. You know, she's at death's door. You know, and I would hope that you could come to our house. Jesus reacts. He leaves the crowd and he begins to follow Jairus towards his house. And Jairus thinks to himself, his mind filled with hope. He can do this. You know, he cares about us. You know, he's coming to my house. And then out of nowhere, there's a voice, and it's Jesus' voice. And he says, who touched my cloak? And right away, Jairus thinks to himself, where is Jesus? He was right at my shoulder. Now he's buried back in that crowd. And frankly, I don't care about that lady. I care about my precious daughter. I want him to come, and I want him you know, to save her. And once again, he begins to question, can Jesus really do it? You know, does Jesus really care about me, my wife, and my dying daughter? Will Jesus really come? Or am I and her and my wife at the bottom rung of his concerns and his bucket list of things to do. We've all been in that situation at one time or another. You know, perhaps that dying daughter is our hospital room. That dying daughter is our dying marriage. Or that dying daughter you know, is a dying relative or a friend that we know. Or that dying daughter is a faltering career, or that dying daughter is our future. You know, we all wonder, can Jesus do anything for us and for me? Does Jesus really care about me? Does Jesus really, is he really going to enter into my life? And then at that moment, all of a sudden, into the scene bursts messengers from Jairus' house. And they say, your daughter has died. You know, you don't bother him anymore. And there's silence. And there's that shock-filled silence of a father who knows that his daughter is dead. You know, and for the moment, it's like time stops. But then right in the middle of it, Christ speaks, and Christ says, don't be frightened, just believe. Don't be frightened, just believe. And all along, Jesus has been listening. He's never lost sight of Jairus. He's never not heard his words. What we often forget is that Jesus wasn't just human. He was God, you know, and as God, he's the master of multitasking, you know, and in this case, he was multitasking, but he cured the lady, and now he's off to the house to cure that little daughter and bring her back to life. He enters into the house, you know, and he didn't have to go there. He could have just made a pronouncement and said, go back home, by the time you get there, your daughter will be raised from the dead. But he doesn't, he, go, he turns and he follows Jairus because it's not only a matter of he can, it's not only a matter of he cares, but what he really wants to do is enter into the home and the life of that family. Christ still wants to do the same. You know, he still wants to enter into our lives and be a part of our lives. You know, he comes to all, he speaks to all, and he says, don't be frightened, you know, believe. And so we have to say to ourselves, perhaps, like that lady in that first story that I told, you know, we have to enter in ourselves. We can't just wave off the boat, wave off the boat, wave off the helicopter. If we wave off Jesus, 
you know, then joy is going to die. You know, and then laughter is going to perish. You know, and then, you know, at the same time, tomorrow is going to be buried in the grave of today's dreads. So we don't want to make that mistake. We want to leave the door open because we believe that he can, we believe that he cares, and we believe that he comes. As he said, don't be afraid, just believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Christians pray that the gifts and the Mass that we offer may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of this your church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Donald our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with everybody. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ 
bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. world. Grant, Grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you, that you should enter my roof, but, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life O Lord we pray so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord Amen. and the Lord be with you with your spirit may Almighty God bless you the Father the Son the Holy Spirit Amen. Amen. go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.